Here we are, we're getting the engine out of the Sport, as I'm going to call it now, as it is a Sport. I was just having a look around it. Bumper, that's a good shot. Um, that wind might be salvageable. This is a lot lower than normal. Uh, this wing's obviously had some previous. I know, probably from this time, but that's that shot. Um, might be able to save the door. A bit of work. Panel gap here is gone. I think the car's a bit, a bit twisted, I'd say. Um, the back end is not too bad. The bumper. Use that. I might have parked it a little bit close to the wall. There, but I, I've got it from there through here, and it's just so narrow. Um, and plus, I don't. I've I've done the engine running because I had to pull it out of the garage and turn it around. The seat I'm using is um, twenty liter can, which has got grease on it, so I put. A, towel over it so I'm quite conscious I've got to turn it around on the road to get it reverse it back into the garage and um, I don't want to be falling off the can and my foot comes off the clutch or whatever so yeah it was uh, it's done now anyway it's in um, yeah the panel gaps on this door are similar to the other one but the shell's in really good condition so yeah, I've got to take the I've got to take the engine out. So I've sold the engine. Um gonna take it out. And I've got that beast to go in. Bogo standard M44 that has been sitting there since I've moved into the house. And that hasn't been used. That used to be in my 600 compact. I got I never used the 600 engine, it wouldn't start, so I put that in. A 1900 then I put the 3 to 8 in it so that's been sitting in there since I've had 3 to 8 in the car which has been a long time but I'm sure it'll just slot in and fire up it's BMW reliability right this is a beast this engine it's just it is beautiful it's lovely to drive it's talky it sounds amazing I'm really sorry that it's got to go but go it must and the sequential gearbox which is a real shame right time to get it out Right, I'm making my way through the bits and pieces that we're disconnecting. Unfortunately, for some reason, the all the lights were hardwired. You couldn't unplug them, so I've had to cut cut those. Uh, it's the only way I could get them out. I'll put connectors on them. So yeah, because you want to be able to get them out easier than having to cut them. Um, there, this front bit. I mean, the car is jacked up and it's pretty level. But the front bit is a lot higher on this end than it is that end. So I would say this has risen up quite a bit, this side, from impact. Um, so that leg, yeah, it's going on the jig. It's going to be straightened, and I'm sure it'll be good as when it comes out. Um, yeah, got to carry on getting the engine out. I've been a bit distracted with the wing and the, I had to get the bonnet out. So I'll take the um, tank out, breather tank. Um, I've got to disconnect the fuel pressure regulator. Fuel pressure regulator will cover the engine, because it's all mapped to that. 
Um, I've disconnected the fuel return line. I've got to do the exhaust. And I've got to work out where the wiring goes through. And hopefully that will be on a plug or something, because if it's on a, if that's hardwired, it's gonna be a bit of a pain. I don't know where the ECU is, that'll be inside somewhere. So onwards, here we go. I've just uh, disconnected the dry sump pipes. I'm trying to get as much off the engine as I can to pull it out. Um, I've got to get underneath it and have a look, see where the exhaust is connected. So, get under it. I'm, I'm very impressed with the shell. It does, uh, it does look very clean. I'm surprised. Um, yeah, there's a connection there for the exhaust, but there's, oh, there's, a, there's an, another one on the manifold. I can split the manifold there, that'll make things easier. The power steering's got its own separate power steering pump, which is up there. So that can stay where it is. I know the pipes for it. Um, alternator needs disconnecting. Yeah, uh, there's evidence that said, oh no, that's where they've welded the cage in and not under sealed it. It looks pretty solid, the shell. Battered, well battered, but solid. Right, I presume, I don't even think I need to take the start motor off. I think I can disconnect the gearbox, slide the gearbox out. So prop shaft needs to come out. Gearbox, um, Four bolts, I think, and it'll slide out the bell housing. I should be able to leave the bell housing with the starter motor on the engine. Um, I've done like the dry sump, the oil cooler, dry sump pipes. It, yeah, it's not much interest watching that come off. Um, so let me get underneath, get on with the exhaust, and then step closer to getting it out. Well, I'm just taking the exhaust off now, and I've noticed how close the exhaust is to the bell housing. I don't know if you can see, but the um, steering column seems to be touching it. Well, I wouldn't be too keen on driving something with the exhaust. It's uh, so close. Just my preference, anyway. 